Nice. If you know anything about venomous, dangerous or deadly animals, you know that we can't discuss the topic without covering those that live in Australia. So today that's what we're going to do. Let's dive in. So that was a cool clip to see because I think it's really important to show that a 10 foot or 20 foot croc is an entirely different thing to deal with than a 10 or 20 foot snake. They are so massive, it's the width that really is impressive with these animals. Hi guys, what I've got in my hand is the most toxic snake on the planet. This is the inland taipan. Uh, a bite from this snake is capable of killing over 100 people my size. Yep, apparently the theory is that one of those snakes, if it was in full health at its maximum size and gave its maximum venom yield, could kill about 110 people. Woman nearly meets God without even realizing it. I don't think y'all understand just how lucky this woman is. Now you definitely know that's a blue ring octopus. I'm sure you know it's one of the most venomous things on the planet. And you might even know that one bite from it is toxic enough to put 26 men on milk cartons. That guy is making a pretty good point right there, because blue ringed octopuses, believe it or not, most bites occur from people handling them. So if you see something that is brightly colored and you don't know what it is, in nature that usually means leave it alone, unless it's a flower. Whoa, he is old. Look at the growth on him. Hey, Bud Bunny and Brody, please don't bite my toes. Please don't bite. Whoa, dude. Saddle, mate. Saddle, they're my feet. It's all fun and games until they try to climb on. In all seriousness though, sea snakes are generally either docile or curious. They are rarely defensive, um, but it still is, you know, best to use caution around them. Two. Three. Mmm. Yep. Mmm. I already feel burn. I can feel it spreading. Uh that was the presenter who's taken over Brave Wilderness getting stung by a stonefish on purpose. No doubt that is excruciatingly painful and obviously something I don't recommend at all. The King Brown's venom may not be as potent as the Taipan's, but what it lacks in quality, it makes up for in quantity. Injecting up to six times more venom in a single bite. So the King Brown Snake has a primarily myotoxic venom, meaning that it attacks muscle and kidney tissue, and it means that this would be a more painful bite and, you know, more painful side effects than perhaps other Australian snakes. Um, also, it's not really a brown snake, it's in the black snake genus, the Sudetius genus, so it's more related to the red-bellied black snake that we'll see later in the video. Look at that. They have a neurotoxic venom, which attacks the nervous system. They're not a spider that you want to get bitten by. Oh, she's putting some little webs on me. Look at that. Now I feel obliged to keep my finger like that, just so it doesn't ruin her web. As you can see, the redback has a really bad reputation, but generally they're not aggressive, they don't bite you just for the fun of it. Most bites occur from them being in your shoe, or trapped in your clothing, or behind something when you reach under it, like furniture for example. That was a beautiful eastern brown snake, which I believe is the second most venomous snake in the world. Remember that eastern brown snakes can look a bit different when they're juveniles. So just because a snake isn't brown in Australia, it doesn't mean you can handle it. This is the moment a swimmer narrowly avoided the barb of a 1.2 metre wide stingray at an Aussie beach. A drone operator caught the heart stopping moment on camera as he saw a man unknowingly swim towards the creature and was unable to warn him of the danger. Jason Obviously there was a very famous case of someone passing away from a stingray attack, I'm going to say it in brackets, and that was Steve Irwin. The reason we know now is not that the venom is particularly dangerous, but it is because the barb acts a lot like a blade, and if it hits you in a, an area of soft tissue, it can go in quite deep and it acts like a dagger, really. Ooh, what do we got here? Yoink. You definitely got to be careful with this one. This is a coastal taipan, one of the most venomous snakes in the world. There's no room for error. If I get a kiss from this little guy, no more yoink, man. So that was Fishing Garrett yoinking a coastal taipan. Um, taking a bit of risk there, but that's what he does, so... What are you going to do? So this is from one day when I was vacuuming my room when I was living in Australia and I vacuumed behind a cushion that was on my floor and sucked up a funnel web spider. Yeah, so to me that didn't really look like a funnel web spider. Let me know what you think in the comments. 
Folks, check this out. This is the Sydney funnel web spider, a potentially deadly venomous spider right here, Atrax robustus. This tiny little spider here is only about half grown, but even at this size, it could potentially deliver a serious venomous bite. There you go, that was more like it. A nice shiny funnel web spider. They aren't fluffy and hairy like wolf spiders or tarantulas. They've generally got some very shiny parts on their bodies, which is another good way to identify them. So that was a death adder using its tail as a caudal lure to attract skinks and small lizards and things like that. And I don't know about you, but me when I watch it, I actually find it quite mesmerizing. Let me know what you think. Beautiful tiger sign country and we're out here horns. We're out here horns. Might see that. We're out here collecting for the Venom program. We've got the new program being built back at the park. We're getting these beautiful wild tribe snakes. And this one, he's got a massive set of venom glands on him. He's now, I know it looks like this guy's taking some risks with this tiger snake, which is a highly venomous elapid, but he's also saving lives. So, you know, definitely got to cut him some slack there. And this here, this little trunk, that's how he breathes. He sucks in the water, which allows him to move from puddle to puddle. He's also got a dart in there. Very poisonous dart, which is very poisonous. So that was a cone snail, and that was a great video because it's someone doing exactly what you should do if you live in an area with venomous animals, and that's educating their child in a constructive way, not a fearing way, but you know, an educational way about the animals that can be dangerous. Cone snails are particularly dangerous because there's no anti-venom, their venom is extremely complex and variable, so there may never be an anti-venom for them. So that was a white-tailed spider. Me, personally, I think maybe how dangerous they are to humans and how much they can cause necrosis and things like that has been exaggerated a tad. Hopefully some Aussies will join in and let me know what you think. A teenage boy was just killed in Queensland, Australia by a box jellyfish marking the second death in 15 years. The boy was standing in about waist-high water for roughly 10 minutes when he became entangled in over 2 meters of jellyfish tentacles. Box jellyfish stings are not like normal stings. They basically melt the flesh and the venom itself can cause things like brain hemorrhaging, cardiac arrest, paralysis, death, and even lifelong psychological symptoms. In so the main concern with box jellyfish venom is the cardiotoxic component, which can stop your heart, meaning that a severe envenomation can be an extreme medical emergency. I mean, if you're swimming where there are lifeguards, your first step is to get to the lifeguard as quickly as possible. We're not the only ones feeling the heat. The snakes are also looking for a shady place to cool off. This red-bellied black tried to slither his way indoors at Strath, but found himself in a tight spot wedged against a fly screen. Fortunately, the folks at Snake Catchers Adelaide were able to show him the correct way out. So the red-bellied black snake is related to the king brown snake, which I showed you earlier. Um, He's trying to get in, get some AC, <laughs> just goes to show that you're not safe anywhere in Australia. This bird can straight hit you with a Mortal Kombat fatality. Finish him! Introducing the cassowary, a species of ratite native to the land down under. And for once, guys, it's not venomous. Can still flatline you, though, and I'm going to tell you how. You see, these neon chickens belong to the same family of birds as the emu, and as such, share their impressive size. Coming in at a solid 79 f kilos and growing up to six feet tall, meaning the short kings in my audience could, in theory, mount these things like a chocobo. But what makes them stick out from emus? Well, you see, the cassowary is uh, basically a spec ops emu, being twice the weight, highly territorial, and most importantly, coming with a f***ing combat knife strapped to their foot. That's right, this is a cassowary claw, and it's the reason they can hit you with a fighting game finisher. You see, these claws are a full five inches long. Well, that was good to see a bit of Aussie humour at the end there. Um, I think cassowaries, they were deadly once. So basically, cassowaries have caused one fatality. A gentleman was attacked by one, fell over, this was almost a century ago, and the cassowary kicked him in the neck, which is obviously a vulnerable area. How dangerous are they when you're standing up face to face? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is that they are not responsible for many human deaths, you know, or any human deaths these days. 
Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I really hope you enjoyed these clips and have some fun things to tell me and hopefully some more information about these animals too. If you did enjoy this, please let me know. Please like and subscribe and please come back next week. Thank you.